I like having some plants in the house, but I always forget to water them. That's why most of the plants in my home are actually dried out and dead. That's why I wanted to have something which could remind me to water them when the soil gets dry. After doing a little bit of research, I realized there are several methods to measure soil humidity. The most reliable and the most boring one is the gravimetric method. In this method, you get a sample from the soil that you want to measure the humidity from, and you put the soil sample as it is on a scale and weigh it down. After that, of course, you need to take a note of the weight. Then you put that soil in an oven and they apply heat to the soil to remove the humidity entirely out of it. Afterwards, they do a second measurement and compare the results. This is the most reliable method to measure the humidity level on the soil, but I don't really want to get a soil sample from my small pots and put them on over on something. I want to have a less time consuming way. Neutron probes are another reliable method to measure the soil moisture. They are very accurate measurement devices, but quite pricey and you'll see why. In this method, a probe is inserted in the ground emits low-level radiation in the form of neutrons. These collide with the hydrogen atoms contained in the water, which is detected by the probe. So the more water content in the soil, the more neutrons are scattered back to the device. I think they are pretty interesting and I would want to use them of course, but the existing models are quite big and also for example in the US they need to be registered with the federal government due to the radioactive elements used to emit the neutrons. So usually they are used by the military or the scientists. Another method is the use of tensiometers. These instruments measure the tension or suction of the soil. It basically consists of one probe filled with water and on top of that you have a pressure sensor. When the soil is dry, the tension is high. And when the soil is wet, tension is low. This method is also very accurate. However, they are not that cheap. So it would be pretty expensive to put a tensiometer for all of the plants that you have in your house. This type of sensors usually only have one single probe like this one. And also they have electronic versions as well. But if they have more than one probe, they may not be using this method. Only issue that you can encounter with this type of soil moisture sensor is the water inside of the tube might dry it out if it stays in dry soil for a long time. Therefore, it might be helpful to get a tensiometer which you can fill in the water again if that happens. Otherwise, they are pretty reliable soil humidity measurement devices. There is also a category of the sensors and it is called electromagnetic sensors and they work in a similar manner. They work on the principle that EM wave propagation in bulk soil is primarily governed by liquid water that has a substantially larger dielectric permittivity than these other soil compounds, like gases and soil minerals. First one is called time domain reflectometry or TDR. It is regarded as the most accurate EM based measurement technique but its usage is limited by its high cost and complex waveform analysis. Therefore, I wouldn't consider this method as a maker-friendly method. In this method, the pulse travels along the probes and into the soil at a known speed, which is affected by the soil's water content. As the pulse encounters water in the soil, it slows down and reflects back to the probes. The TDR probe measures the time it takes for the pulse to travel and return, which can be used to calculate soil's water content. The greater the water content in the soil, the slower the pulse travels, and the longer it takes to the return to the probe. To measure the soil content accurately, you need to go around 1 GHz. The principle is pretty simple, but I don't know any cheap microcontroller which can achieve that speed. I was able to find some specialized microcontroller which can achieve that kind of frequencies, but they are not really that cheap. And since we are maker, we don't really want expensive alternatives and want our project as cheap as possible. But if you know one, please write it down in the descriptions. 
and the other method is time domain transmissiometry. Time domain reflectometry and time domain transmissiometry are two similar but distinct methods used for soil moisture measurement. And the main difference between them is instead of using single probe, you have two probes and send the pulse and measure it from the others. And the last one in the same category is the capacitive sensors. They got pretty famous nowadays, especially in the makers community. And the main reason for that is they are pretty cheap and also they don't get corroded like the resistive sensors. These type of sensors are pretty easy to make. I made a simple one and actually you don't really need that much components and almost all of the microcontrollers can do that because they are not using that high frequency levels and the frequency levels in the range of tens to hundreds of megahertz. So I think most of the microcontrollers can achieve that. Only the microcontroller needs to have is the ability to produce PWM signals and also having an ADC channel. Even a comparator one would. And in fact, if you go to the AliExpress, they are quite cheap. And if you take a look at one of them, only they have one 555 module, it's a timer, and also discrete components. In reality, you don't really need a separate timer like 555 module. All you need is microcontroller which can produce PWM signals and you only need a few discrete components. When the PWM signal is applied to the transmitter electrode, an electrical field is generated in the soil. The water in the soil acts as a dielectric material which affects the electrical field. The higher the water content in the soil, the higher the dielectrical constant and the greater the electrical capacitance measured by the microcontroller. And I designed a PCB in KiCad. I used MSP430 microcontroller, but any microcontroller with uh, ADC channel and PWM capability could do this job really. For example, a tiny city and such. I have also the same design applied to a tiny, and you can check it out down in the description if you are interested. It is really a simple design. Here I have a buzzer, and all the discrete components are here, and here are my two probes. And behind the PCB, I have the microcontroller. Because of their working principle, they don't need to touch the water. Basically, you can just put them inside of a bag and put it inside the water. And it will work just fine. If you want to use that kind of sensor, it is recommended to apply some sort of epoxy to protect the electronics. But you need to be careful as well, because it will affect the characteristics of the sensor. So you need to calibrate it after you have done your treatment. For example, I have used a nail polisher to prevent it from the water. However, it didn't work at all. But the real issue starts when you try to use it in a soil. For example, the soil inside of this pot is almost dried out. I am putting a glass of water in it and I'm waiting for a little bit for soil to soak it up. And as you see, it is quite wet currently and I can even say it is way too much water inside the pot. But once I put the tensor inside of the pot, it doesn't really work. I tried to fix it by changing the design and doing the research, but nothing really helped. And after doing a little bit research, I learned that they cannot work properly because there are air bubbles inside of the soil. So this sensor is only suitable for certain type of soils. So I think it might work fine in a controlled soils, like greenhouses and such. But for house applications, or for the general purpose, I don't think it is really trustable. Let me know down in the descriptions if you have used this type of sensor in your house reliably. Some research papers mention that if you can use higher frequencies around 1 GHz for example, you can get more reliable results. But again, that kind of design won't be super cheap. The last type of method is based on measuring the resistance of the soil. Basically, you apply voltage from the one probe and try to get rid of it from the another one. And depending on the soil moisture levels, you will get different resistances. Higher the moisture level, lower the resistance will be. But I was trying to avoid using this type of design because biggest issue with this method is the corrosion. I have two boards. This one is cracked from this side, but it is okay. It doesn't gonna uh, hurt a lot. So I am gonna solder this thing 
Uh, but only there will be one difference between them. I want to see how long it will take it to corrode entirely. So I can make my software accordingly. And only difference is I'm gonna thin this one. Because in theory, yeah, I think if I thin the probes, it will take longer to corrode. And the corrosion only will take place on the solder. And for thinning, only need this a little bit solder and also soldering paste. They are exactly the same, at least on the growth parts. Only the difference is this one is tint and other one is left plain. Idea is the one with the tint to last longer. Let's test that. Right now I set it up to 3.3 volt constant uh, regulated voltage and I already start seeing some bubbles here. Let me zoom that in and show it to you. I have already started seeing the bubbles. It is the sign of the electrolysis. And the bubbles that we are seeing coming from the water, which is converted to hydrogen and oxygen. I will leave those up and see how much corrosion that I will see after waiting for a while. As you can see, they corrode very fast. Within only a few hours, they started corroding vigorously. And on the PCB boards, there is only a small amount of copper on them. So they become useless only after a few hours. This one has no trace left at all and it is basically not usable for anything. And this one, the tin has been melted but still there is copper underneath it. So it still has some time and I think it is definitely extending the life. But well, you can actually see amount of the copper which has been dissolved inside of this because this one is more bluish and this one just started actually getting the corrosion yet. But definitely you don't want to drink any of those. Those are definitely not going to be good for your health, obviously. So this time I designed another one with a tiny, a tiny 13A because it is quite cheap and actually it has all the functions that we need. And this time the soil moisture sensor is very straightforward. All we need is applying some power and we need another pin to get the ADC levels. But to reduce the corrosion level, we need to apply only a small brief time and the PCB that I designed have more or less the same form factor. Only difference here is of course I am using a tiny here. Also I am using again a button cell. If you want to get a long battery life, you should only apply power in a brief moment to the pin. Let it deep sleep as long as possible and wake it up from the watchdog timer. And I wrote an Arduino code. A tiny is sleeping most of the time and woken up by the watchdog timer. And if you also want to use the same code, you need to install the microcore and select a tiny 13. And to reduce the power consumption a little bit lower, you need to select 128 kilohertz. Brownout detection is disabled and click upload. I will also provide written instructions on the GitHub page, so you don't need to worry about it right now. And this is the final PCB that I made. It's a single-sided board, so it's friendly for toner transfer method or for the cheap CNC's. I have milled this PCB with a cheap CNC machine. Maybe I can make another video about it later. Also, I so you can check the soil humidity levels on demand. And also you can determine the battery level by pressing it. This wasn't the method that I was looking for because of the corrosion reasons. So I think after changing the battery a few times, and I need to thin it again and I can reuse it later. So I have planted a few plants in this pot. Hopefully this time I won't forget to water it. Have you ever used another method successfully? Then please let me know down in the descriptions so I can redesign something else for it. And like always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and see you next time.